So today I want to talk about the ecological effects of high temperatures. Temperatures in certain regions of the world have reached dangerous levels in recent weeks. We have seen record-breaking temperatures in the range of 45 degrees Celsius in Mexico and 50 degrees Celsius in India. That's 113 and 122 Fahrenheit, respectively. These are temperatures where heat exhaustion, if not heat stroke, is extremely likely in humans, even those who are in the greatest of health and condition. These ailments can occur in very short spans of time, especially without proper amounts of water or shelter from the heat, and the humidity can only make this worse. We have seen humans in both of these regions die within the past few weeks, simply from the effects of heat on the human body. It's something that doesn't quite get the attention of a major disaster, and it's something that's often undercounted or misclassified when it does occur. In short, it's a silent killer, one that we don't talk enough about. However, I also want to point out that we are living in the proof of the predictions and models that we've been warning about for decades. It doesn't feel good to be here, but we are in fact here, and it's time that we acknowledge it. At this point, what is left to be said that has not been said a hundred times before? Was it worth it? Was it worth it to make sure that a bunch of billionaires got their quarterly earnings, and that the investors were pleased at the value of their portfolios rising seemingly infinitely? What really was any of this for? Who has this been for? We have created circumstances where these more consistent excessive temperatures will be happening for longer periods of time and happening far more often. And worse, we have not even begun to take the biggest steps necessary at stopping the increases in temperature that are happening, let alone potentially halting it and or reversing it. These types of temperatures are going to lead to the deaths of countless animals, the further eradication of ecosystems, create water shortages, and establish dangerous conditions for humans, especially those who have to work in these high temperatures. And at the top of that list amongst all of those workers will be the people who have to build our infrastructure and grow our food. Now, today, rather than go through all the details about how and why we've gotten here again, or teach you yet again about the dangerous realities of wet bulb temperatures, or to talk about the dangers of heat on the human body and human life and who it will affect like I've done before, Today, I just want to share with you all three stories about the repercussions of our collective actions, and truthfully, our collective inaction at being able to stop or choosing to stop this. These are factors that are affecting our beautiful planet right now. And I want to do this and share these stories with you all, not to display hopelessness or exhaustion, but to remind us what is still at stake here, and what is worth fighting for and what is worth trying to fix and save. The question I want you to ask yourself through these stories is whether or not it's worth it for some investor to live it up and preserve their so-called property rights if this is the outcome. Ask yourself, is this worth it? Our first story today is about howler monkeys and the other wildlife in Mexico that is being affected by the heat. The heat there is so brutal that howler monkeys are dying of heat stroke and falling out of trees in three different states of Mexico. It's been estimated at the time of recording this that around 157 such monkeys have perished from heat-related complications. This number is likely to increase in the coming days. In addition to the heat, this is made all the worse by humans who have destroyed many local habitats for animals via deforestation and forest fires. On top of all this, Mexico is experiencing regional drought due to a below average rainfall, which is of course made all the worse by the heat and the human intervention previously mentioned. Now these factors have created conditions where bats, birds, and yes, monkeys are not able to find the conditions of their own survival in these temperatures. These creatures require water just like we do to cool down, and they can't access it during a water shortage. They need shade to protect them from the heat, and they can't find that if their forest canopies are destroyed. These are the things that are happening during the hottest times of day, where they're searching for ways to get out of the heat and can't. 
Every time a corporation clears a forest or creates a plantation with a crop or a livestock that requires a lot of water, they add to the conditions that make it so that these creatures die every day. It's also worth mentioning that a similar thing is happening to both monkeys and birds in India, where the temperature hit 52.9 degrees Celsius, or 127 Fahrenheit, in Delhi on May 29th. What else is left to be said about that? Animals are dying. And then we have to move on to our next story. Second story today is about coral reefs in the Gulf of Thailand, where coral is bleaching due to record high temperatures in the waters. The waters in the region have reached a temperature of 33 degrees Celsius or 91.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Under normal circumstances, the coral is colorful and vibrant. However, when temperatures rise and the water is too warm, the algae in the coral will leave, which turns the coral completely white. What this does is leave the coral significantly more susceptible to disease and under significantly more stress. It also means that the coral is without its major food source. Coral reefs are a major food source for marine life and provide habitat for all sorts of fish. Not only is this coral issue going to impact those fish and the marine life that call the coral reefs home, but it's also going to affect the local people's ability to catch seafood and maintain their food security in cultural ways. Additionally, outside of heat, coral bleaching can be caused by runoff from fertilizers, especially those containing herbicides. Both as global temperatures rise from the general climate change, and in instances where large industrial farms allow stormwater to drain into the reef, we will see increased levels of bleaching. And yet again, I have to ask, is it worth it? Finally, our third story here today. I want to take us to a location that's not usually associated with the heat. Namely, Alaska. In Alaska, the rivers are turning orange. And the reason has everything to do with climate change. As global temperatures are rising, and permafrost in Alaska is melting, this is releasing toxic metals right into the rivers. Some of these metals include things like iron, zinc, copper, nickel, lead, and possibly even mer mercury. All of that is spilling into these rivers as the Arctic regions heat almost four times faster than the rest of the globe. This phenomena is historically unheard of in regions where mining has not occurred. But due to this melting permafrost, we are seeing these conditions, and we are witnessing something that could have dangerous ecological consequences, primarily for the wildlife that makes use of these rivers and calls it home. Fish in these rivers can accumulate the metals into their gills, into their livers, and into their muscles, which can all influence and change the chances of this fish surviving. Any creature that consume these fish or that drink the river water in order to survive, could also develop toxicity, especially over time, where these things can accumulate. That doesn't even begin to count the effects it could have on fisheries and human water supplies, or the diseases that melting permafrost could hold and spread into the rivers that will eventually end up in humans or animals alike. The consequences of this are drastic. And I wonder if it's been worth all that extra oil we've been pumping out of Alaska, building pipelines that have gone through all of Canada and into the United States. The oil that we continue to burn as we speak, that we've been burning for the past few decades and are likely to continue burning if nothing changes. The fact of the matter is that these are just three of the many ecological realities that have been occurring and continue to occur and these, again, are just three stories that were considered newsworthy enough to make it out to us. Remember that most of these stories won't, and the ones that truly will affect the bottom line of companies won't make it to us. And if they do, it'll be to shame protesters and shame the people who are trying to stop it, rather than to actually make sure that we actually protect our planet. Again, the point here is to ask the question, is it worth it? Has it been worth it? letting the people with economic influence and power continue to profit off the destruction of our environment and our planet to get us to this point. Is it acceptable to continue to let them do this as we move forward? Things will only get worse as temperatures rise by even a degree or two, 
and that will keep happening over the coming years. Our current strategy does not serve the ecosystems in which it destroys. It doesn't serve the animals who are harmed or killed through these processes. And it also doesn't serve the interests of the people local to these climate disasters who are being put in danger and being put in positions where their livelihoods and food sources are at risk. So again, who does this really serve? Who is this for? Is it really worth it for us to keep allowing corporations to make the line go up in their model of infinite growth? You tell me. That said, if you've learned something here today, you can support the channel by liking the video and subscribing. You can also check out the links in the description down below to join the Discord where we have great conversations on topics like these. Or you can join the Patreon where you can financially support the work that goes into researching these videos. But please only do so if you are in a financial place to do so. And with that said today, my name is Anarchist Terra. Thank you so much for watching.